Hello, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate you. In today's video, I want to share with you how I go about creating custom dagger tattoo designs within Procreate. Should you have any questions about anything that you see or hear throughout this video, I'm going to highly encourage you to drop a comment down below. I will do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. I do also have social medias under the same name as my YouTube channel. I would truly appreciate the support over there as well. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as I'm going to be bringing more videos like this for you all. Should you enjoy my channel and find my content helpful, consider becoming a Patreon or sending over a super thanks as I would truly appreciate your support. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive straight on into this. This is going to be a quick and easy method to go about creating daggers within Procreate. You can see I have five different designs that I've made here and all of these are custom to my liking. They all have their own little thing going on with them. These are all dagger style designs right here. And I'm going to share with you how to go about creating these sort of style designs within Procreate. And these can be 110% custom to your liking. I do understand that these dagger designs may not be for everyone. However, the rule of thumb and what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video could still be applied so you can implement your own style, your own techniques and elements that you want to use on your end to get a dagger design custom made by you. Here I have a brand new session within Procreate. As you can see, we only have the one stock layer that comes when we open up a session. My canvas size is 8.5 by 11. I will make another in-depth video showing you how I go about creating a canvas size, the size of my stencil paper. Just to confirm, this canvas is the exact same size as my tattoo stencil paper. So anything that I draw out here should come out almost identical on a full tattoo sheet of stencil paper. Taking it from the top, within Procreate, there is a feature that allows us to essentially mimic what we draw on one side to the other. And this is very, very useful for drawing daggers and other sorts of artwork. You can kind of use these features as you see fit artistically. But for now, I'm going to use this feature in this basic matter that I'm going to share with you all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my layer up here. As you can see, I only have one layer. Make sure that I'm selected on the correct layer. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this wrench tool up here. And then I'm going to turn on my drawing guide right here. From there, we're going to notice that a grid pops up on our canvas. I'm going to select edit drawing guide because we are able to select that now. From here at the bottom, I'm going to select uh, symmetry. And then from here, I'm going to turn the opacity and thickness all the way up. What this does is it makes this line more pronounced, defined, and more profound. We can see it easier, so to speak. Within the options, we do have vertical, horizontal, quadrant, and radio, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, as well as the options of assisted drawing and rotational symmetry. For now, I'm going to select vertical, and I'm going to leave rotational symmetry off. I'm going to leave my line black, although you can change it to any color that you want right here. I'm just going to leave it on black for the sake of this demonstration. And then I'm going to hit done. So now we'll notice that the canvas is now divided in half. I also want to point out that this does not pop up on the final print. So we're not going to see this line in the middle when we print the design. What we did here is we turned on a feature that Procreate offers. And you can see if I draw on one side of the canvas, it's going to appear on both exactly the way I drew it on one side. And this right here can be great for creating different designs. So you can see right here, right off the bat, I'm getting right into creating a dagger. And it doesn't really take much thought. This is kind of where the fun begins to happen. You can really just kind of start thinking out loud here within Procreate. And if you simply don't like the choices that you're making, you can double tap to remove and you can kind of continue until you're making choices that you do like. So allow me to kind of just run through this one here. And all of the daggers that you saw there were kind of done within a matter of maybe an hour, maybe 30 minutes, somewhere around there. So you can see that the time it took to create these is kind of natural so to speak so what I'm doing is I'll tend to experiment with different designs and different looks here to kind of see what I like and see what I don't try to make up new shapes and kind of elements along the way so all I'm doing here is I'm using my artistic insight to see what looks good to me and what I don't like. 
and this again is what I feel the fun part comes into play. It's definitely not my intent to get lost within the design process here, but you can kind of see right there, I was immediately inspired to begin creating, and this is kind of what I came up with in a short amount of time. I encourage you to try this on your end to see what you were able to come up with, and you can kind of repeat this process like so by duplicating the original layer with the assisted on, and then you can kind of just clear the layer out by selecting this blank part and then select clear and then you're able to go ahead and begin from the top again and you could do this over and over and over until you're satisfied and also I would highly encourage you to implement your artistic creativity implement different elements such as dot work line work shading um, different textures maybe think about these sort of elements when you're designing different daggers to see what you can come up with and um, let me continue here to kind of explain a little bit about my thought process here as well when I'm creating a dagger. So for me, I'm either going to begin with the handle or the blade. To me, it doesn't really matter. I kind of will begin anywhere, whatever really inspires me more. For this specific dagger right here, what I want to do is I want to start with the handle and then with the blade, I kind of want to have those old traditional blades where it comes up this way and it comes down this way, like a machete style blade. So therefore, we're going to have to turn the feature off here in a bit. So let's start with the handle. For the handle, where I'm going to begin is maybe at the top part here I'm gonna begin with maybe a wing type of design and all of this again is on the fly this is just all freestyle I'm not pre-planning or pre-thinking this out I'm just doing this as I go whatever comes to my head right now so something like this maybe for the beginning of the handle here I kind of do variations of what I liked originally to see what I like the most. That's looking pretty clean right there. And for me personally, I try not to do too much thinking about it. I try not to give uh, designs too much thought because when I find myself doing that, I find that it's harder for me to be happy with the design that I'm doing, let alone finish completing it. So I try not to give it too much thought in, in terms of perfection. I'm not going for perfection. What I am trying to do is to create a design. That's all I'm trying to do right now is to get a design out. And I think that should be the focus. So like basically I'm looking at what I think looks good, what doesn't. So I can figure out what I want to keep and what I don't here. We have this sort of handle here. Oh, a circle for right here. So I like the way that that's looking right there. So you can kind of see I'm just trial and erroring my entire way through until I'm figuring out something that I actually like here. We can also get more advanced with it and add another layer without the assisted drawing on for detailed areas. So for example, I can add a layer and you can see that it's not mimicking what I'm doing on this side. So therefore I can put threading within the handle here as I see fit. Keep in mind, these are little things that we can do along the way. So you can do something like that should you choose to do so, and that is on a new layer. We could even add another new layer and 
do the blade as I was mentioning earlier, where we have this sort of style blade here. Let's try that again though. Like so, I do like the way that that looks right there. I don't want this tapered out more up here. Just my artistic preference there. You can use different line weights as well, which is something that I highly encourage. That looks cool right there. So keep in mind, we're using different layers. We're using the assisted layer here, as well as two other just standard blank layers to create this sort of dagger design right here. And I could switch on and off. I can go back to the assisted drawing layer with a different line weight and then add more details should I choose to do so. It all depends on what I want from my dagger. And this is something that we can figure out along the way. Or we can go in it with initial ideas and things that we want to try. It's going to be to each their own. For me right now, all I'm doing is I'm kind of freestyling it along the way. And I'm just seeing what comes up from these different methods here. You can add that little detail should you choose to do so. And again, this is all going to be artistic preference. We could even go and add a thinner line weight over here by going back to the other layer. For me personally, I like having tattoos with different line weights. It creates more interest. I think it provides a more of a quality read when people read it. So you can see I'm just kind of mix matching different elements here and I'm trying different things to see what I like, to see what I don't like. That looks cool right there. I could even add some details within this circle here, but I'm going to use the assisted for this. Add little details like so. And over time, once we start making these little changes here, you can see and you'll notice that all of these little details start adding up and then we start having a cool tattoo design. So here's another quick little dagger. From here, let's see if this design was complete. All I have to do is combine these layers combine these and then we have one full complete design right here. If I wanted to try another design, all I would simply do is swipe to the left, hit duplicate, mute the or hide the bottom layer here, tap in this blank area and then select clear. And then I would begin drawing all over again. And I do feel that when it comes to drawing daggers, there is no right or wrong place. You can really start wherever you want on your end. You can start the handle, you can start the blade, you can start at um, on details. I mean, it, to each their own, who's to say, really? So for me personally, I like to start in places that inspire me. So it's either the handles or the, da the blade itself. But for this one, we're going to go with the handles. I'm not going for perfection. I'm going for the best of my ability here. And that's all I can really ask for. That's all I can really do here is the best of my, or to the best of my ability. And you can have different shaped blades should you choose to do so. You can do like sharp blades like this sharp 
skinnier type of dagger points. You can do round dagger points like this one. You can make your blade bigger. You can make your blade smaller. All of that is going to be personal preference to each their own. I really truly feel like there is no right or wrong when it comes to creating your own custom designs. If your client likes it and you're happy with it and it's something that you're capable of tattooing, I don't see what the harm would be there. So you can see just adding some subtle lines there on the side does start creating a world of a difference. I can again add that extra layer over and then start adding details here. Like this, should I choose to do so? For me personally, I like the way that that looks. I just don't like how it's colliding with the existing design there. So for me, that's kind of telling me I should probably use a different element besides just a simple overlayer there. I should probably maybe go with some details within here. Something like this. Maybe something like that. I do like the way that kind of looks there. But you're going to notice that this entire process is just kind of artistic insight. You have to be inspired. You have to see what you really like, what you don't. And then that's going to help you really determine what's right for you and what isn't. And that's all that this really is. I can do this all day and show you all, but essentially it's going to be the exact same workflow. It's going to be the exact same process that you see here. It's just going through the motions and creating a design that you are happy with and creating a design that your client is happy with. We can get super creative as well and in here you can add little details like this and the elements are endless really you can use shapes you can use points you can use tapers dots lines as you see me doing here uh, when i say elements i'm referring to different elements here that make up a design so as, for example you can see this designer here is typically consisting of lines some dot work and some areas but mostly lines and so an element that I'm using is line work to complete and create these custom daggers right here so use different elements another element is shading another element is dot work another element we have is thicker lines textures So we could even do something like that if we want to get real creative with it. Can't forget the line down the middle here. We can go all the way to the top right here should we choose to do so. Or we can have a simple taper out like that. Or we could even leave it like that. That actually looks great right there. I personally love the way that looks right there. It's kind of like a happy little demonstration accident there. But that looks cool. So as you can see though, another dagger right here and this right here, the outline versus the final tattoo is going to be completely different. Keep in mind, we can implement shading on the outer edge. There's going to be dot work in a lot of these places right here. So a lot of this is going to be covered with dot work and shading. So you got to keep in mind the design lined right here digitally versus the final design is going to be completely different. We can see right here though that I have a few dagger designs just from this demonstration alone that I, I'm happy with and that I like. I can add a lot more detail to this one, but for time purposes, I'm not going to do that. What I would like to do is demonstrate one more time on the process here. So I'm going to duplicate one of my layers. I'm going to clear it out and I'm going to make sure that it's highlighted so that way I could work on it. As you can see, we're ready to go here. And I'm going to begin creating. We can start anywhere. We can start on the blade. We can start on the handle. We can start on the details. Wherever we'd like. I'm not going to tell you where to begin. Start where you feel comfortable.
So I'm going to start with this right here. And then I'm going to repeat that. Like so. So now I have this shape going on right here. And then I'm going to begin working on the handle here. So what if I made the handle completely different, something like this right here, and then I used a layer to go about inserting some details. Like so, so we can do a handle like that should we choose to do so. And you can see that there's many different ways that we can go about this. One thing about making daggers is that they'll never be the same, especially if you're experimenting with different elements. I can go in here and do what we did earlier, where I have a smaller line right here. And I can even get creative and add some details like so if I want to. I would like for you all to note that these designs may not be for everyone. However, there are tattoo collectors that do like these more traditional style designs. So always believe in your work as well. Just keep creating, create a body of work so that we have more than enough for different uh, type of people to choose from. That's what I would recommend doing. And then down here we can maybe do something more sharp. Let me go back to the appropriate layer though. Could have this down here for this part of the dagger I think that, that would be cool you could have a short style dagger should you choose to do so you can layer it like so we can have a thin dagger I kind of go through the motions here and look at the different shapes here we could even do it where it's this sort of shaped dagger. And again, the possibilities are completely endless here. Please take what you want and leave what you don't. Adding different elements. Even adding a blade like that in the background right here gives it some pizzazz. We can do dot work all in this area right here. So you get the idea. The possibilities are 110% endless. I don't really feel like there is a right or wrong, especially if you like it and especially if it's something that you can tattoo and your client loves it, then I don't see what the harm would be. But you can see here is another blade that I'm coming or another dagger that I'm coming up with right here. I can choose to add as much details as I would personally like. It gives me a good chance to exhaust my artistic choices and abilities here. So you get the idea behind it. That's how I can go about drawing this blade right here. Some details right there. So in a short amount of time, we have a few concepts to work from. So from here, what I can do is present these blades, these daggers that I created, I can present them to my client and then my client can kind of pick and choose which one they like. And then we can go back and forth on maybe some changes they would like, maybe some um, elements that they do like, elements that they don't. So that way we can find more of a middle ground on what the client wants. But you can see though that I do have a different selection of daggers that took little to no time to create. 
and Procreate, all from scratch, 110% custom. And I would feel happy and proud presenting these two clients because they are custom. Traditional style designs typically have either black or gray shading or they'll have full color. So if you're looking to do shading or color, you can do that as well. For this design right here, I'm just simply going to duplicate it. And on the bottom layer, I'm gonna fill in the colors that I want here. So let's say I wanted to use some red here. What I'm gonna do is just start dropping in red in the areas where I want red. And then I can pick corresponding colors that would look well. So for this one, I'm gonna use this teal color. So you can see I'm beginning to fill this design with different colors that I think would work well. And this gives us a good idea as to what we can expect when we do have different colors within our tattoos here. So something like this, we can do any color we really want here. Let's say if you wanted to show the design with some shading, you can do that. So I'm gonna go to the layer where my colors are on. I'm gonna select the alpha lock. And then from here, I could begin adding my shading to the different layers of my design here. And here is a simple example of how we can go about creating a dagger within Procreate. This is a mock-up of what we could show the client if they were to choose this specific design with these specific colors right here. I will make another full in-depth video sharing with you all on how I go about coloring my designs. But for now, I'm gonna to try to keep it simple and stick to the dagger design. But I hope that you can get the idea of how I go about creating dagger designs within Procreate. It really is that simple. If you have any questions at all, I'm going to encourage you to drop a comment down below. I will do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. That'll be it for this one. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring my bell as I'm going to be bringing a lot more videos like this for you all. I do also have social medias under the same name as this YouTube channel. I would truly appreciate the support over there as well. If you enjoy my channel and find my videos helpful, consider becoming a Patreon or sending over a super thanks as I would truly appreciate your support. With that being said, I appreciate your time. Thank you for tuning in. You have a great day.